This is the Hope Not Note podcast, where we answer your questions and share inspirational stories to fill your soul with hope. Our mission is to empower hope to those who have been plagued by note. I'm Dr. Dylan Caswell. And I'm Brandy. And we're here to bring you out of the note and into hope. Welcome to the Hope Not Note podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is our 41st episode, which is absolutely crazy. We've been doing this for over a year and we love, love, love serving you. At the beginning of each episode, we dive straight into our question. And then after (laughs) we share our hope stories. And so stick around for our hope stories. I am excited to share mine. So make sure to stick around and listen to it. But first, our question. This is from a listener named Carter. And he asks, I keep seeing this headline that you age twice as fast at ages 44 and 60. I'm turning 44 soon. Should I be worried? Carter, great question. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful example of when you see a headline, it's meant to grab you. It's meant to draw you in. Mm -hmm. We have to go to the source. We have to go back and read the actual article, not just the headline. And when we read the headline, the headline makes it seem, seem as if that at age 44 and at age 60, you age dramatically. And you can read that, which Carter has, and it can freak you out a little bit of like, hey, I'm turning 44. Does that mean I'm going to just age all of a sudden and I'm going to be sore and not able to move around and not able to do this and that? And do I have to worry about my organ function? Like all of these things. And the article itself, the researchers... And when they wrote this article, they actually did a really good job in the the discussion talking about the article's shortcomings. Mm -hmm. Those are not what are highlighted Mm -hmm. in the headlines that say at 44 and 60 that you're going to age dramatically. So I want to start with there with saying that the researchers did a good job of writing this out and saying the shortcomings of it. They did a good job of explaining that we don't age in a linear fashion, which like, this may be a surprise, but like nothing is linear. Mm -hmm. Like everything is non-linear. Hope is non-linear. It's it's non-linear. And I think maybe people before had this idea that every year they get older chronologically, that biologically they get older. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm 20, so now that I'm 21, I've gotten older. I'm 30 now. I'm 30 when I've gotten older. I'm 40 now. I'm 41. I've gotten older. In the number system, you have. But in the biological system, that's not the case. Because you can change your biological age by lifestyle factors. Mm -hmm. What you're training, adapting to stressors, all of these things that can be controllable. These can take the biological age and reduce it. Or on the other side, if you're slamming five cups of coffee, three Celsius a day, not getting hydrated, you're not working out, you don't have good coping mechanisms, you don't feel purposeful, you don't have good community, your biological age is going to be much higher than what your chronological age is. So the study, I also want to point out that the sample size was very small. Mm -hmm. It had a a little bit over 100 participants in one area of the country. Like, this is all in California. Mm -hmm. And the age range was, I think, 25 to 75. The median follow-up was 1.7 years. The maximum follow-up was 6.8 years. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they started with a 25-year-old and followed the 25-year-old through their 30s, through their 40s, through their 50s, through their 60s. The maximum follow-up was 6.8 years. And that was only one participant that had six-year wow. follow-up. So they did gather a lot of data, but then a lot of assumptions were made. Because mm-hmm. how can you follow someone for 1.7 years and then say that, oh yeah, we all at the age of 44 are going to have an increase in aging because some of the participants, if they started following them and they were 25 years old, 1.7 years later, they're... 26, almost 27. Mm -hmm. So how do you know how they're going to age at 44 or at 60? You you can't. But they did, they they got the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. 
and and they got these factors in there. But when we look at the study and you start to read through the details of it, you start to go, oh, wow, there's a lot of assumptions being drawn from these headlines, mm -hmm. not from the authors of the research study, but from the headlines themselves. Uh, the other thing I'll point out, and it gets a little confusing of the markers that they're using to define aging, but the thought is using histones and this uh, molecule of GPTAs that when they increase, it shows aging because it signals uh, cellular death, what's just called cellular apoptosis. And so they looked at these markers along with a lot of other markers, but then they say in a study too that we need more data and this needs to be validated further for us to actually know that this is something related to that. Because right now it's a good hypothesis, but it hasn't necessarily been validated because this whole area of biomarker researching, it's still relatively new. There's still a lot of learning that's happening in, in it. So summarizing all of that, it's a great headline that pulls you in, but we have to go to the source. And, and when we get to the source, we see the limitations, we see how they got to that, those conclusions. But then you start to ask these questions. We mentioned the sample size. We mentioned that it was only one area of the country. We mentioned that uh, the follow-up was not 20, 40, 50 years. And I also want to point out, last, last point I'll make on this is that in the conclusion, the authors did a great job of saying this is likely due to lifestyle factors. Mm -hmm. What they said in the study was, we didn't follow their lifestyle habits through this study. We didn't ask about them. We want to know them. We're curious about that. But with all the data that we're collecting, we didn't gather that data. And that could explain why we saw these shifts in aging at 44. They also found one at 55, but for some reason that didn't make the headline. I don't know if like 44 and 60 was better. Maybe the people writing the headline are in their 50s. So they're right. like, yeah, let's <laughs> for those ones. But you see that and you start to go, well, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what? would bring on a sudden increase in aging, the inability to adapt to your stressors. Mm -hmm. And for every person, that's gonna happen at a different point in your life. And it, it, like a lot of people wanna say like, oh yeah, in the forties, like that's typically when your kids are teenagers. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a huge stressor. Like I'm trying to adapt to that stressor, but like this teenager is a force. Well, some parents may have that in their fifties. Some might have that in their late thirties. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many different life circumstances that's going to cause us to all age differently. And it's kind of funny because the whole purpose of this research was to show that we don't age in a linear fashion biologically. Yet the headlines are saying <laughs> that we age like at this set point at 44 and 60. No, it's not linear because mm -hmm. it depends on you as a person. So for us to have this, data, how do we actually get this answer? It takes a lot more research. It takes research from different pockets of the country. It takes research that's able to follow people throughout this lifespan. That's like incredibly difficult to do. So it's like, it's hard to get those answers, but this is just an example of like taking pieces of it and proposing this headline that's catchy that brings people in, but you read it and the researchers did a really good job of dis describing the shortcomings, what they need, what their other hypotheses are as to why this aging is happening. That's not just, hey, you turn 44 and all of a sudden the signaling to your cells say, time to age. Right. Well, let's get rid of these cells and have more inflammation, all this stuff. It's like, no, it depends on a lot of other factors. Yeah. I think my biggest takeaway from all of this for Carter and our listeners is that if you're turning 44 soon, you don't have to be worried, especially if you have a healthy and athletic and fulfilled lifestyle. I think back and, and this is a little bit different, but I'm going to share it just for the sake of it's kind of related, I guess. Um, but when I was like 22, that was at like the peak of my eating disorder, but I really wanted to change. And so I had to go get these different testings done. And they told me that I was aging twice as fast. Mm -hmm. And when they told me that, I first I was like, oh, well, that makes sense as to why 
having chronic pain all the time, why I'm feeling like dumb, why my back hurts, why like I'm super fatigued. Like I'm already 45 years old. And like at the time people would say, oh, Brandy, you're a grandma, you're an old lady. And it was like this like affirmation, but then it was also this thought of, I am not that old. So why don't I make a change now in order to preserve like my age right and so after that like I was there to make changes but then I was shocked with what was told to me but then it, it motivated me even more to make the changes and I haven't had the testing done because I don't need to have it done but I am way healthier than I've ever been in my entire life I'm not in chronic pain like I used to be and I am way more fulfilled than I've ever been in my entire life and so I look at those things and I'm like I'm great, you know? And so I think like, for me, that was like because of eating disorder recovery and all of that. But at the same time, just life in general, if you are struggling in some sort of way, the biggest thing is you need to make a change in order to be more fulfilled. Yeah. And so don't be worried about, oh, I'm gonna age twice as twice as fast, or maybe my biological age is, is higher than my current age or vice versa. like. Regardless, pursuing fulfillment should be a priority. Yeah, completely agree. And, and on that subject, I feel like Carter, other listeners, they might be like, yeah, like, okay, I, I, I get that, that chronologically I'm turning 44. Next year I will turn 45. The following year I'll turn 46. Like the chronological age, that that is something that's linear, but that's just a reference point that we used to be able to communicate with people. Right. You watch some shows with like, docu-series or documentaries in, in like third world places and the jungle these tribes don't know how old mm -hmm. they are like how, how old are you how many years i don't know this isn't they're an elder mm. they're wise like well how many times have you been around the sun we don't know mm -hmm. like it's not something they track because they don't need that for their societies and communication we do mm -hmm. you know I, like someone turns a hundred, their face is on a Smucker's jar on the Today Show. Like we celebrate the chronological number of it. But biologically you might be asking, well, and like, how do I decrease my biological age? And as Brandon said, the, the fountain of youth is in doing things that are fulfilling to you, like, to like truly fulfilling. And then I'll go on to say, to add to that, that it's not in supplements mm -hmm. that you're gonna find this. The fountain of youth is in movement. It's, it's in movement. We wrote about it in the book, but uh, elite level masters lifters, they had a biological age and, and cardio output that was 20 years younger than controls that weren't doing these activities. People that are doing power activities throughout their life, people that are moving, people that are lifting, their biological age is much younger. And you can see that and you can, you can tell that, right? If we take a person that has been smoking their whole life, Versus a person who has not smoked and has continuously moved and participated in things that are meaningful to them. The person that's been a smoker their whole life in 60 may look like they're 80. The person that's 60 and has moved their whole life and been fulfilled and has stayed away from things that are creating more stressors on, onto their system. You may look at it and be like, I don't believe that you're 60. Mm -hmm. Like You can tell me that you are, but, but I don't believe that. That right there shows that there's a lot of things within our grasp that are controllable to bring down the biological aging. Mm -hmm. For sure. Should we hop into our hope stories? We should. And I think you should go first because you're excited about it. Okay. And you said you have to wait. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you got to go first. Well, I like that you brought up like the people in their 60s because my dad's in his late 60s and it's about my dad. Mm -hmm. My dad had his class reunion, his 50th class reunion, which this year is my 10th, 10th reunion. So it's just like crazy because I can't even fathom what 50 would be like. But my dad had his 50th class reunion, which is just cool in general. And like that brings me hope because my dad's around. And so he gets to see all of his friends from high school and all of that. But really the hope story is that the high school that we went to, they honored the football players who played during their tenure. Some of them didn't play their senior year, but they played at some point during their um, tenure of high school and they honored them during the halftime. And so it was really sweet. There, maybe there was like eight or 10 of the guys who were able to be honored. 
and they went out on the field during halftime, called their names, they each like waved. But what I love the most, what I'm most excited to share about was that after they like did the announcement of all the men who played football in honoring their 50th reunion, the men like lined up as if they were about to like play football. They had a center, they had a quarterback, they had like three running backs on the team, they had a receiver. There were a couple guys on defense that lined it up on offense just for the sake of whatever. But it was really sweet. They like pretended to do a play. And it was cool because a couple of the guys actually did run, which I think if you're in your late 60s and 70s and you're running, that's great. And maybe they don't run every day, but it was cool to watch like the quarterback fake hand off to the running back and then both of them start running like down the field a little bit. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to share that because I thought it was awesome and sweet and it brought a lot of joy seeing like the videos and the photos from that day. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Mm -hmm. and, and and props to them for uh, carrying out the take. Mm -hmm. Uh, really selling that. Yes, it really did. <laughs> for the non-existing defense. Yeah, in, in the the team of of football because it's football season and we love football. Are My you up the Chiefs. Not the Chiefs. <laughs> nope. But I am shocked and thrilled that they won that Thursday night opener. Yeah. By a toe, because <laughs> that typically does not happen. Mm -hmm. Like we're like, well, you're a Chiefs fan, of course. Like you think they're gonna win? No. Like Not that Thursday night Bowl, opener yeah. after the Super Bowl, they have all the ceremonies. Like, I think it's five or six years since the home team that's won the Super Bowl has won that first game. Wow. Like, it's and a hard game it. to win, and they, and they did it by a toe. <laughs> and I'm not going to talk about Syracuse and how excited I am about them, but. Mama like Court is crushing it. Two hope stories. I'm mean, we, given three hope if you, stories. If you really <laughs> want, we could just talk about football for an entire episode. I'd be fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. My, my hope story goes to my alma mater, in which our nephew is officially on the varsity team. Yeah, he is. He has worked his butt off over the summer. In the first game, he dressed for varsity, but he wasn't sure he was going to play. He's like, I'm on the kickoff team. But I'm like lower on the depth chart for receiver and for defensive back. So I probably won't see the game or see the field much. So we got there and it was like halfway through the first quarter. Mm -hmm. And one of their starting receivers had an injury. All of a sudden, our nephew's playing every snap on offense for the first half. Uh -huh. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait a minute. He said that like he's lower on the depth chart and he's like dressing. He may play, may not play a lot. He's got every snap. Mm -hmm. And it was so awesome. Like, he one, he looked like a varsity player. Like, he put on a lot of muscle. Mm -hmm. he, like I said, he, he put in work. Yeah. He was doing, like, two or three days on his own. On his own. Studying, like, plays. and Right. He's like, crushing it. Yeah, he put the work in, and now he's... And he's just a sophomore. He's a sophomore. It's awesome. And he's officially on. He made a tackle on the kickoff team. Uh, him and one of his teammates pancaked the linebacker. Mm -hmm. uh, some some other good blocks. But it was just exciting seeing him out there and that he's earned the spot. And talking back and forth to him, he's like, "Man, he's like Uncle Dylan. I'm so excited. I made varsity. I'm like, that's awesome. We're both in agreement of like the work's just starting. Mm -hmm. Like this does not mean that you stop putting in the work that you did. This means that you're working even harder mm -hmm. to keep earning these spots and to earn receptions and to earn some playing time. So mm -hmm. he's like. He's putting in the work in, he's earning it, but he's just so excited yeah. to be part of that. And it's so cool to see him on the field that I played on and my brother played on that field for a little bit, but then we're getting a new field. So most of his games were in other <laughs> locations. But it's still special. But it's the same home. area. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, I, I love both of these hope stories. I love football. So anytime we can talk about football, I'm happy. But thank you for listening. I hope that... It calms any of your worries if you're turning 44 or 60 sometime soon. Um, if you know someone turning 44 or 60 that is worried, feel free to send this episode to them because one, hopefully it'll give them a little more peace and two, maybe it'll motivate them to prioritize movement in their life on a regular basis and prioritize being fulfilled. And three, maybe it'll help them turn on a football game this weekend. Right? <laughs> I feel like that might help decrease biological hundred percent or it could increase depending on your team yeah sorry about the go browns <laughs> go brownies <laughs> have a great week and remember every day is not just a day to be hopeful it's an opportunity to become hope 
The Hope Not Note podcast is meant for educational, informational, and personal development purposes only and does not constitute any health or medical advice. If you're looking for specific advice, connect with us to work with a Hope Coach. The Hope Not Note podcast shall not be liable or responsible for any loss or damage allegedly arising from any information or suggestions in this podcast.